works. Committee meeting minutes. Move to adopt. Second. Um, oh, I got a motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Item number two. Discussion and possible action of the snowplow exemption appeal application 812 10th Street. Um, I, didn't my, I didn't memorize your first name. It's uh, Stacy. Are you here, Stacy? Okay. Not coming. Okay. Uh, so she had applied for uh, to appeal a decision that she couldn't park in the street and uh, that was denied. And she's requesting a refund of the, the $25 for the application because it was kind of crisscrossed in the mail on my phone. So what did you and Tom decide that? Um, we didn't, I didn't really decide anything. We just, it's a $25 fee and for a first time applicant. And because she couldn't get onto the grass where she was supposed to be parking because of all the snow. She parked somewhere else and I believe she got a ticket. And she's requesting to uh, her $25 back and she'll just figure it out. So there was a ticket in addition to the $25? Mm -hmm. Okay, so she's already paid her ticket. Yep. All right. Thoughts? And so so we're not, we don't have to take any action on the exemption? Is that? To just we don't, recommend to refund her $25 yeah, for the application because right. she was denied. And she applied back in November and it wasn't even approved until after January. So. Hmm. I don't have a problem giving her money back since she already had a ticket and she's going to be parking on the street. Yeah, anyway. it's kind of. So I'm going to move to approve the refund of $25. I'll second that. Okay, got a motion and a second. Any other discussion, Tom? Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Nope. All right. Moving on. Whoa. Uh, let's see here. Discussion and possible action on the Bird City USA application and resolution 01-18. So we've been contacted by Tropical Wings. Yes. And they would like to apply for Hudson to become a bird city. There are already over 100 bird cities in Wisconsin, if you don't know that. And there are a number of things you have to go through just to uh, become bird friendly. Um, and there's a whole list of application and points you get. And one of them happens to be for us to have an International Migratory Bird Day. Uh, which they're proposing to have in May. Mm -hmm. So as you know, in the spring, birds come and migrate from here. A lot of them come straight from Costa Rica. So Tropical Wings has been tracking them from there, and we kind of keep track of what kind of birds they are. They're also once a year uh, in Wisconsin, there's a, is it December? There's a, we do an actual count. bird count uh, in our city to help Wisconsin understand the kind of birds and population that we have for songbirds. and. I haven't memorized the application, but there's a variety of other things, including how do we manage certain things in our parks and whether or not we have an energy audit or um, our, our LED street light network qualifies as a as cost savings. Because we save roughly 50000 a year on energy now with our LED lights. And this may be people know that. I don't know. But uh, so we have a lot of good things going for us. I think it's a good idea for us to support this uh, effort. <clears throat> and you and Tom are helping them to complete the application. Is that the deal? So really all we're looking to do is uh, approve the migratory bird day here. Yep. Okay. And to recommend adopting resolution 1-18. And I guess the question will be asked is what, does the, what work does it entail for us and what kind of resources do we have to supply? Um, just to help them with From the what I know, mostly information. Yeah, it's just... A link on our website that, and then it'll have a bunch, you know, the different links to get to some of these invasive species, and then school forest information, buckthorn removal efforts, and you know, just pretty simple. 
Right. It's a little, a little bit of website you. work. It's really, really pretty straight up. Okay. All right. Doesn't seem like it. It's a good thing. It's a very I mean, good thing. <laughs> yep. It's always, is it going to take someone off from doing something else? Is it? No, not in particular. Okay. Uh, can I get a motion then? Or? I move to approve. All right. I'll second that. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next up, and I assume that's why everyone's here, is the pickleball courts. Is that right? Anyone raise their hand if you're not with the pickleball? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing with you. All right. Uh, are you the pickleball guy? Well, maybe for a few minutes. All right. Um, just as a review, the last meeting we discussed this, there was uh, some discussion about the total project cost and what that estimate might be. So there were various examples supposedly floating around. So the direction that the Public Works Committee gave me is to come up with a total project cost estimate. So That's right. I wasn't real successful in getting some real hardcore examples uh, at various locations. I did contact a few people, uh, some of the other communities. Uh, some of the examples, I guess, they weren't apples and apples comparisons. Some of them were adding new courts and revising or revamping existing courts. So long story short, um, Mike Lammer, who's here, audience has a, had a sketch so what I did is based on the sketch he provided I put a uh, preliminary cost estimate together on an eight court layout eight pickleball courts and again in my preliminary estimate I am coming up with somewhere in the neighborhood of about hundred and sixty thousand dollars again this is rough there would still be some fine-tuning uh, as far as some of the let's call it the technical specs of what do you really want for fences or what do you really want for finishing touches but so I guess I think that gets us into a ballpark as far as magnitude of cost uh, as far as next steps I know that uh, at the last meeting there was a letter of engagement with SCH for design services and I guess my opinion at that meeting was that that was a little bit premature so starting with this preliminary cost estimate and then looking at next steps I did have a conversation with Brenda who's the finance director and uh, I think I passed out to you what's in right now, the current five-year park plan. And then the, uh, what I actually handed out is the appendix that talks about the projects, the various park locations for 2016 through 2020. And in that, if you look at uh, um, the front sheet, right now in the approved park plan is uh, $75,000. And it, but it is uh, not in the old park plan. Um, it was moved. So right now, that seventy-five thousand dollars is in twenty nineteen, is if for uh, a calendar year. So, and it's labeled for Whitcamp Park. So talking with Brenda, what she said is this five-year plan should be revised by the Parks Commission, including the cost estimate, because or not the cost estimate, but just which year the funding is going to be allocated. So as of right now, there's 75,000 listed for 2019 in the parks plan, and it's listed at Whit Camp Park. So in any event, I think, I don't know, hope this isn't too bad of news, but uh, it, I thought the intent of some of the people with the pickup ball were to build this thing this summer. And the bottom line is, uh, according to Brenda, there are no funds available in the 2018 plan. So again, from um, the perspective of the financing side, the five-year plan should be revised to include whatever figure in whatever year. Um, she didn't seem was very possible to revise the park plan and put money from 2019 into 2018 because 2018 has pretty much already been discussed at various council meetings and various levels. So other than that, I guess, um, I'm not sure what more else, again, it, it's down to a financing issue and when and where the money comes from. Well, I also see uh, um, 25,000 in Lakefront Park in 2019 also. Uh, one of the, I think one of the questions I had at the last meeting was 
if the pickleback pickleball backers have come up with a plan to raise money or to contribute to any project can can somebody speak to that Both our chairperson and our president, I think, went south. It was a, probably a good move. The um, this past year, we developed uh, the Hudson Community Pickleball Association. We, we have our own articles of association, and the gist of that development was to pursue the, co the concept and the consent to build eight outdoor pickleball courts, but also to use the St. Croix Valley either by memberships and also by public and, and private donors to help uh, pay for those courts. Uh, my background uh, happened to be the USAPA ambassador for the Hudson and River Falls area. And I've worked with several other communities to uh, build pickleball courts, be it a, as Tom was alluring to, a four court conversion of tennis courts or as in Eau Claire where we developed uh, 12 new pickleball courts. And each time it's an association of, of the players that get together to promote and to help fund. Now some communities do not require funding, other communities uh, like the large expansion for Eau Claire required up to $80,000. Some are 15,000, some are 25. But the significance of an association, which recognizes even here where we had over 250 people sign up to become uh, associated with the association and then future members, the beauty of that is that they operate the courts and they raise sufficient income every year at all these different facilities to, to maintain these courts. So that there's a major investment either to conversion or in this case to build them. And you'll look toward in this case, the Hudson Community Pickleball Association to help fund. We've been working, um, I happen to teach as a former personal trader at the YMCA, and we've been working on an alliance. In fact, we drafted and filed with the YMCA, I believe yesterday, a memorandum of understanding how we'll do a joint partnership as well. The YMCA uh, wants to build courts um, and then when they had the opportunity to help with public versus uh, the Y itself developing all the income in the land, uh, they joined a partnership. Now that has not been, as a lawyer, uh, that has not been finalized, but the intent and, and my direction from Chris Coast has always been, yes, you can see that we're working on a partnership. Another example on behalf of the association, I'll be meeting with uh, board director members for the Hudson Hospital Foundation because this is a perfect setting for them to put money into the community to benefit the health of its citizens. It's one of their prime directives. So I do anticipating uh, raising funds. I'm not sure of the amount, uh, 20, 40,000. I have not talked to the board members about that, but uh, it would not be unusual for uh, the size of this project. And quite frankly, the, the pent up demand for them. Mike, has the Y considered building courts near the Y itself? Oh boy, um, let's see. That was, I believe that was not told to me in confidentiality. So uh, that to me was an open dialogue with, yes. The answer is we looked at more than one location at the Y and also uh, an offsite uh, last year, but the, uh, we could not come to an agreement to do that. At that point in time, I was speaking with uh, the executive director and saying, look, um, it happens to be that Hudson is the only community within 60 miles that does not have their own pickleball courts. There's a terrific need. Uh, I mean, I anticipate having three, 400 players here. I had already taught over 140 players just coming through the Y itself in the last two years. I said, the demand's coming, it would, suffice us that we don't have to raise capital at the Y, and as I like to say that my slogan is, we'll get double the courts at half the price if you're a major and significant contributor. So that's 
uh, exactly where we stand. The proposed budget in 2018 is being discussed as part of the expansion for courts offsite, and they like they like the idea of the two different parks we've we've looked at, including Grandview. Is it premature to ask where the offsite location is? The offsite location that the Y considers at this point in time is no longer a viable option. It was explored, start, to the best of my knowledge, negotiated, <clears throat> and at the end, uh, bureaucracy took over. Right, yeah, I, I do believe the Y would prefer, I definitely believe that the Y would like to join our partnership. But are you saying that the, by the YMCA itself, physical, location there's no place to put pickleball courts or no two locations um i think everybody's yes here if you're familiar with the property the y we were looking at two places one originally where they just did the addendum to the new parking lot that was one site we looked at originally then we considered building uh behind the y straight back uh, where they have the skate park to the right of that that makes sense. And then also we had conversations about building them when you first come into the Y, that first hill where you sometimes, uh, where they put out tables for vegetables in the summertime, that place. We looked at the uh, St. Croix camp. They've had tennis courts who are completely dissolved and it's easier to convert, as Tom and I discussed, from a cost standpoint than to uh, put down new aggregate to build pickleball courts. So at that point in time, rather than to make that major investment for itself, when they heard the opportunity, instead of building two courts or four courts, they could get eight courts, which they could participate with and uh, promote their mission to help the community, it was a far better deal. So you, you can't build that number of courts at the Y? Uh, you could build six at the Y if they wanted to put that type of capital investment into it. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. So <clears throat> it was recommended to me that we have the park board take a crack at this to not only adjust funding, but where and when timing because um, we could make a decision, but I think it, we don't really manage what goes on in the park. Is, it, is, is that next week? Mm -hmm. can, they, can you get that on the agenda with them? Yeah, I put it on there already. Okay, good. So we don't really need to take any action at this point. Is that correct? We're just making a recommendation to Park Board to review the comments. So I'll move that we uh, pass this on to Park Board for a recommendation. They need to look at not only what parks, but uh, what year and how many can what they should do is re revise the <coughs> five-year park plan okay because that says it's a list of all the parks all the expenditures in the proposed years in a five-year interval because right now that again the 2019 is logged for 75,000 the other thing I should just throw out to it okay we're we're looking at a potential hundred and sixty thousand dollar project and how this gets built has to go through a certain process if it's going to be city funds like right now there's potentially seventy five thousand dollars now it's in the wrong year but for a city it's a hundred because there's twenty five thousand in here as well well but in any event for a city project to go it has to go through the public it has to be designed it has to go through the public bidding process and has to be awarded by council sure. and built and for that to occur typically the city would have to have the entire project amount if it's 160,000 they'd have to have that amount even if some of it's coming from the YMCA or the pickleball association or somebody mentioned potential grants or some of that some of those other possible locations but typically again just from a process standpoint it would unless I, unless somebody has 160,000 cash and can just go out and build something that's a, probably a different story but for a city project to go out the city would have to have that finance that's true sure. Again, I'm talking with Brenda that this this should be revised, and then <clears throat> whatever year. Well, one of my recommendations would be for 
you guys to say if it really is three to four hundred people I mean are eight courts really going to be enough it doesn't sound like it like if you had parks on some on the north side and some on the south side that would help I guess my point is uh, why don't we try to come up and conceive of what pickleball looks like in five years from now and at least put it on the plan and then if it can get funded then we would work it that way you know what I'm saying so let's not just try to get three or four courts or eight Let, let's actually look at what pickleball looks like in five years that's kind of how we've been trying to attack things here so that at least we can start seeing long projects that need funding come down the pike and then we can consider it as part of our long-term funding solution so it sounds like pickleball is very popular um, I've never played but uh, I see it at the Y um, and that we probably could support at least a couple sets of courts long term to you know fit in with what you're trying to do hey we're on tv so you got to speak into the mic the did you want me to draft up a two-prong proposal then on both white camp and grandview based on we expect the usapa to have over eight million players in America by next year. Are they all going to play here in Hudson or no? <laughs> Only for the tournament. Okay. Yeah. But it's the fastest growth. It's just we, we're building nationally now over 300 courts a month. Wow. Uh, so I can make a projection on, on the need. I think that'd that. be very helpful because, you, you know, we don't really have an idea. And if you say, well, I only want 12, and then next year we're going to need another 12, and next year we need another. We might, let's just get out ahead of it here and see what we really need long term. That's kind of okay. what I think. As a layperson is it strategically an intelligent thing to do to propose three hundred thousand dollars versus 160 when you come in with a budget request you're shaking your head yes i say yeah and the reason i say that is that we don't know we there what you don't or you may or may not know is there's so many competing elements for funds that we just have to figure out how it all works it may or may not work out but at least we know that we really would benefit from having three hundred thousand dollars worth of pickleball courts. So, but if we can't plan for it, we can't. It won't just show up in the budget. So that it's better to be able to plan for it. That's, okay, I yeah. can do that. Okay. I think, and what I'm thinking is we, the, the long-term plan. What's it going to look like five years from now? And then what are the steps there? It's probably. I think I heard before that eight courts is what you need to have a tournament. Yes. That works for a tournament. Yes. So that's. That seems like a good logical goal. That's a that's a nice piece that brings people to Hudson. So I think that's you know, if you're looking at two sets of those or whatever it is, but at least look at it, at it that way. And we and we need to be sold. You know, so here's here's the benefits of you know, racquetball. What's it going to do for Hudson? The other piece that that concerns me is 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 the funds. Um, we struggled this year to and went over the, the budget that we wanted to pass and we just had to we're slow we're, so we're going beyond boundaries that we've we've that have been set not that's not necessarily a bad thing but i really want to would like to see a strong fundraising plan how you're going to do that 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 is going to be the other half and I, to me i would be looking for half of this to be coming as grants donations fundraising whatever that is and Tom's point about having to have the money in the pocket before we build it is, is true. That's what we did with the, with the uh, dog park. They raised the funds. They gave us the funds. We built the, the dog park. So is that just, the you talk about seventy five thousand in the budget? And then you had a different twenty five that's been allocated to another resource. Is that different from impact <laughs> fees that have been set aside north and south in ninety four for the respective parks? That is a different set of funding, yes. Impact fees are can be used for a new park. A new, new park development. So that's that correct. Would be an yep. asset that yeah, could be the, employed. The five-year plan that they're speaking of in the outdoor rec plan, that's based on what the park board would like to see. It's not set in stone that it means that that's what's going to happen. So now they'll go into the next two-year cycle of capital requests, and therefore pickleball may fall into the 1920 requests. Not necessarily the council is going to approve it, if, but at that time you have to have the money. You know, we have to say if it's three hundred thousand, that's got to come out of the big pot of money that the city is going to, you know. So and then they depend, and then if you come up with a hundred thousand or whatever you come up with, then that goes into the bonding part. Less, you know, that, that 
it's a little bit of, I'm not a, the finance director, but that's my understanding, but we're, well, going into, we're going into the 1920s, so we're gonna have to ask for it then. That doesn't mean that this was where it was gonna be. That's what they talked about. It didn't mean that that's where, it, it's never been asked for. It hasn't been asked for. This is part of the, just the out direct plan. Uh, my name is Colleen Hammer. I'm a resident of um, Hudson, and I'm also on the board for the HCPA. And I've had a chance to talk to Brenda a number of times mm -hmm. about the funding, because trying to figure out, you know, okay, the, the bonds are issued every two years. We've got the 2017-18 um, issued, and then now it's coming up for 2019 and 20, which is what we're talking about for the 75,000 and then the 25,000. But then as um, Michael just brought up, you know, about the impact fees, and I believe the correct term is park dedication fees. From what I understand right now, sitting in the reserve, is 75,000 north of 94, which would be for Grandview, and you know, um, and then south of 94, which would be for White Camp, there's $400,000. Um, but also another, you know, caveat that Brenda mentioned is that in order to use that money at those parks, there's actually a master plan um, for those parks. And so then the question, and I don't, and I'm pretty sure Pickleball no, is not in the master plan right. for Grandview, so it'd be a little bit trickier but I, she was gonna look into it for White Camp, so that's a question I have is, you know, is that something that was originally part of that park? Um, no, so that's something just to, I just wanted to add. Right, so to we're, think about. we're punting and pushing it off to the park board, so they'll talk yeah. about that on Tuesday. Yeah. But okay. you wanna remind them of that, and then where does it fit into that plan? Because Pickleball's not in there right now. Yeah. So we wanna get it into their five-year plan so it can be considered for projects mm -hmm. come. And as you know, there's not always funds available in the current budget year. Well, th there happens to be at this point, but I don't know. It's still not, to, not enough to build eight courts. So um, how does that work? And then uh, can you do have two sets of four? Or even if we could allocate the money, did the park have other ideas to how to use that? So w we don't know that at this point. Um, so that can, that's going to happen on Tuesday. Is that right? Well, Will they're they going to look Tuesday? at the construction costs. I, the five-year capital Requests don't usually happen, wasn't going to happen next week. I mean, that's a lot of, well, it'll I think, happen within you could the next ask couple for months them to because consider it, it though. To, yeah, I mean, yeah, you can ask them to consider it. And that's probably what they'll consider to include it in the next five-year capital projects. Well, we won't give up on this. We just want to push it over them because they're the ones that, that have looked out five years ahead to see what's actually coming because down Because if road. you look at the master plans, what she's talking about is... In White Camp Park, it doesn't specifically say pickleball courts. It doesn't say tennis courts. It says ice rinks. It says sledding hills. Nothing, you know, relating to tennis courts. Um, as far as Grandview, yeah, there was like tennis courts out there, but obviously they veered away from that. And now there's the dog park is in those two locations where the tennis courts were originally planned. But they haven't built out the bathrooms out there, and they haven't done everything to fulfill the master plan and that's what we're trying to say is we want to fulfill the master plans or m make amendments to the master plan so that it would include pickleball courts or it wouldn't you know so it has those have to be amended the master plans okay. for the park well why don't we put this on next month's agenda so we don't lose track of it and did Good. I make do we made a motion did I make a motion yeah was there a second on that second yeah uh, so motion and second to move it to park board temporarily. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So they'll discuss it. We'll bring it back here next month so we can circle the wagon so we don't lose track of it. And uh, this, to me, this is progress. So we have numbers, we have ideas, and so we'll just keep talking about it until we can get her going here. Well, you, if, if you want to have an inkling of what your five-year goals are by next Tuesday, is that something you can scratch together? or Because they meet here, right? Yeah, we're meeting here. Um, Park Board meets here next Tuesday at 5 or 5.30? I don't know that they have to have that right yet I'm, because when they work on the five-year capital, it's going to be for all the parks. So they can make a recommendation. It's whatever. If it's you good have, to have it, it by then, that's fine. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right, next item on the agenda.
Uh, the review of the five-year proposed street projects, 2018 to 2022 and beyond. So we've been wrestling with, of course, uh, Grandview's done, Vine, we've pushed to 2019, so that put Hanley into 2018. And we need to do Industrial Street, Crestview to Hanley. What are we doing on Industrial? Uh, it would most likely at this point, again, we haven't had core samples taken, but we'd look at a mill and overlay. Mill and overlay with spot curb repair is what those numbers are based on. Similar to what we did uh, Oh, I guess it was two years ago on the um, down by the hockey rink on Industrial and uh, Aspen Drive and Pine Pinewood. Those 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 three streets were done. Okay. 2016, I believe, street improvements. And let's see, we got Dominion and Hosford in 2020, and then Second Street in 2021. Now, our outlay for Second Street isn't going to be that bad, right? Because DOT is covering. We have a huge sewer and water. Our initial understanding is the DOT would, and again, I, we haven't seen an agreement, but I, the initial understanding was they were going to cover. Um, and again, I've only been in one meeting, and that was four years ago, and it was real preliminary <laughs> at that time. <laughs> Very. It's been delayed <laughs> at least once, if not twice, since then. But... I believe the street and storm sewer costs were going to be uh, a DOT. Now, whether there's a, mm -hmm. I can't guarantee there's no city participation number. I believe the DOT was picking up that, but again, uh, the meeting I was in was almost four years ago. Okay. Three and a half years ago. But our uh, water and sewer is like over yeah, that would it's a million to, something. That would have to yeah. come out of the uh, Their utility, budget. utility funds. Okay. And I know for sure there's a, you know, a large, water main upgrade, uh, sanitary sewer, I believe the scope has not yet been determined because they'd have to televise and determine the uh, scope of the sanitary sewer, either repairs or replacements. And because the water main, we have like yeah, there's 12 down to four inch main. Yeah, and it's yeah. 80, 90, 100, 100 year, old year old pipe old. or whatever, yeah, very old. Okay, uh, Sixth Street reconstruction, we've been talking about that since I got elected because that's in my district. Um, <laughs> And we've been able to do flex patch because we have our own flex patch here, which I know is not repairing the road, but it's made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. However, we do need to rebuild that road. It's probably one of the worst in about 25 mile radius. It's not good. Um, need to determine funding for this large project. You know, you kind of, party thinks maybe we should take that in a couple chunks. I don't know, but that's still a few years out. So maybe we kind of, just know that it's there. Um, one of the reasons I want to talk about this meeting because I had some questions about projects beyond 2022 because we've been talking about um, well, Locust Street's there. Uh, that and that again is a water and sewer problem with curb and gutter, right? That that's mm -hmm. been it's definitely a storm sewer and street problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure the condition of sewer or water main at this time. But my guess is super. We know old. we have storm yeah. sewer issues for sure, right? And, and curb and gutter issues. And Hanley to Highway 35, aren't we working on that now, or is that more? It's on here again. Well, the, the project we're talking about this year is Hanley uh, from Carmichael to Heritage Boulevard. Oh, okay. That's past that then. All right. Tom, the, uh, looking at the projects beyond 2022, um, is there any way that, I know it's, it's several years in the future, but these look like some pretty expensive projects. Is there any way that you can, at some point, maybe next year, give a projection as to what those estimates might be? My recommendation is is to do a formal pavement management plan, and it's likely to be very spendy, and that would address exactly what you're talking about. And uh, 
that's something that uh, likely would be a candidate for uh, our consultant. Uh, what spending? I'm guessing somewhere in the thirty thousand dollar range. Oh, geez, okay. That that doesn't. I was thinking you're yeah, hundred fifty well, or pickleball again, I'm just courts. Throwing that number you know, we didn't we didn't sit down with the consultants yet, but okay. It, you it think is, that a consultant? Yeah. Tom, do you think a consultant could come up with fairly good numbers for these projects in the future based on today's dollars? Yes, that's basically what a pavement management is. Now, is it going to be exact because it's out five years? I mean, I, but what they would do is they'd look at the city, uh, the city street system in, in its entirety. They'd look at the various lengths and widths. Uh, I think some of our you know, it's in the, uh, what's the whiz dot database? Whistler pays yeah, the Whistler system. has, the city is part of the DOT system and has all the streets logged into a database. They have all the streets and they have them by segments. So in other words, they have the street lengths, the street widths for all city, all city streets. Um, the starting point of that would be, a lot of that data is quite old. So the starting point would be to verify the lengths and the widths. Then you would verify the PASER, go do a PASER rating on all those streets. Uh, you would categorize the proposed method of repair. Would it be a reconstruct? Would it be a mill and overlay? Would it be seal coating, various levels and, of deterioration? And then you would put uh, basically uh, a price per foot on the various uh, recommended approaches to maintenance. And then you would look at the whole city and then out of that, you'd prioritize it. And then from that, uh, you would try to come up with a more accurate five-year plan. That sounds like the idea. So that's, that's in a I agree. kind of a quick, I well, didn't get like, everything, but kind of a bullet point, that's the process. The, the I-94 is the big nugget that, you know, they keep saying 25 to $30 million. Well, who's going to pay for that? Well, based on my conversations with Mike Johnson, I haven't talked to you, Tom, about it, but DOT will pay for a portion of that, then what's our cut? What's our nugget on that? It sounds more like the five to 10 million because we're not paying for the interchange itself, we're paying for the traffic stuff around it, right? So. Yeah, I haven't been involved too much there, but that I is a negotiation. Number, yeah, yeah, that's typically a, a negotiated agreement, mm -hmm. but it, it will be a large number for the It's city. not gonna be quite, small. Right? Quite larger than most of what you see here is my assumption. Yeah. And that is the, by far the biggest project out here and would need to be start, you know, we've got by, they always call it 2025, but we just want to be wary that somewhere in the 20s we're going to be building that, that, you know, that's just, but we're working on our comp plan for 2019 starting this year, so we'd have a better idea of all that as well. Well, again, when the corridor study that uh, Glenn Van Warmer from SEH is completing is done, that's the kind of the starting point with right. discussions with the DOT or potential discussions with Madison or you know or whoever on, yep. on getting some of that going relative to costs and timing and do we can have it be moved up can it not that type of thing do we have money for a thirty thousand dollar payment study for this year or should we try to put it in nineteen or twenty or Put it in 19, don't you? What I would do is see how we come out on some of our, like our 20, 2018 street improvements. Okay. And uh, if you recall, last year's project on Grandview came in um, kind of substantially under the estimate, but maybe, and, and again, this is typically a really good project for basically call it late fall or winter from us. Um, actually, late fall is better than winter because once the snow flies, you have a hard time doing your PASER ratings, but. Uh, but anyway, at, by the end of the summer, August, September, you typically have a, will have a good idea whether we're pretty much on our estimates or over under on, on this year's budget type of thing. So would you say then in later in 18 or first thing in 19 or late in 19 or for a payment? Well, I guess if you have the money, uh, I would do it as soon as you can if you have the funds available. If not, it may be from a funding perspective, it has to just be put into the 2019 slot. Okay. But you know it could be done in early 2019 as well. You want to put that in there for 19? Sure. Or? You Sorry. know again, and I we think probably get an estimate for from the that. standpoint of what's in front of us tonight. I I think most of the council is still supporting Vine Street to be potentially done next year. 
So if Vine Street is potentially the one for, let's call it the major 20, I guess that'd be 2019 improvements, then whether that this five-year plan could, you know what I mean, you'd still have 2019 to do this pavement management study and give you some of these uh, estimates. And so you're, you, you do have a kind of an idea of what you're doing in the next year or two. Right, right, right. that's what I'm thinking. Roadway maintenance. So we'll put the 19 budget for and it could start in the winter or 19 kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea, especially you start to look at some of the secondary streets now as uh, the main roads would kind of see the, perhaps the, the ending of that for the <laughs> limited the, other, that the other thing with that too is in your older part of town you have some of these streets that have these very old concrete sections underneath and this is you know if you're reconstructing them it's going to add to the cost and it also gives time for uh, like KIP to evaluate because you it, for sure as right. part of this right. process right. you want to evaluate any water main issues uh, and again I think there's still some hundred year old pipe uh, so he, at the same time, I would encourage KIPP to do an evaluation of all the water main and all the sanitary in this same area because it affects different types of maintenance. I mean, if you have to, if you have to do utility trenching, then you're, you're not going to do a mill and overlay because you'll have trenching through there and that type of thing. Uh, that was one of the questions that ran through my mind. It, with this $30,000, we're really not going to understand the substrate. That's underneath that would, these roads. That would well. primarily be just s streets at the surface. It would not include any evaluation of water main, uh, storm sewers, and there's or fill and probably would or, or 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 utilities. That would not be anything to do with utilities. Right, right. But how about the fill, the structure underneath the the surface? Would you, that takes typically floors. you wouldn't at that at that early stage uh, as far as like doing soil borings or something. Uh, typically, no, you would yeah. do that later. In most cases, okay. In my experience, uh, the other thing that's not on here is the Eleventh Street Bridge. Eleventh Street Bridge, because it already is inadequate. We've talked about it uh, at the Trail Advisory. There, they've kind of, the county's kind of identified that as a connector from downtown to County Trunk F to come across 11th, well, it's hard to even, you know, there's not enough room to drive on it, let alone have bike traffic mm -hmm. and pedestrian traffic. So somewhere, and we've identified that as too narrow just for um, traffic control from our standpoint. So what would a project like that look like to work on that bridge, you know? Yeah, I guess I believe there's been, and I think you probably gotta go back a few years. I think mm -hmm. there's some either correspondence or possibly there were some meetings with the DOT, but uh, I'm not sure how Is that I'm their bridge that to maintain then, or is that our bridge? I, that I do not know. I mean, again, we're, um, I'm thinking that the last meeting potentially could have been four or five years ago on that topic, as far as between city and DOT staff. I, again, I don't know. I think Denny Darnold might have been involved with the last one of those meetings, but I don't know what, what the outcome was. But it's been check into it's it. been a while for sure since yeah we we should talk about it we should put it on the list yeah that's talking with Denny a year or two ago but I know they were in discussion about that but how deep that discussion was I have no idea uh, okay so what do we do six Hand this over to Mike Johnson and say what's going on. Is that <laughs> do you have? <laughs> well, it's good. You know, we should keep talking about that bridge for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, I. That's going to get real important when we start looking at that building X, rebuilding X two. Yes, for sure. What's a good way to get across the interstate? Not going. I personally don't see myself riding my bike across Carmichael on that load of traffic. Uh, Jim's gonna, he likes to do that, but <laughs> maybe Tom will too, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm rather go across Levitt Street. <laughs> I'm looking for a bridge across. Um, it was also mentioned to me that we're not able to, s we aren't currently spending all of our sidewalk curb and gutter money, is that true? Yeah, it's kind of hit and miss. So one of the things that we yeah. identified um, 
uh, last night in the Trail Advisory Committee is that looking for funds and uh, Mike had already identified several places where sidewalks don't go all the way through mm -hmm. and areas that we can improve connectivity just from at that level. Mm -hmm. So maybe some of that money could be used for that because mm -hmm. Trail Advisory has no budget, looking to get a budget, so that might be part of it. Mm. I, I'm sure it's not yes. tons of money, but it's some money for sure. Yeah. Are, are they going to bring some like recommendations then? Mm -hmm. If he has an area, because if it's brand new, then it would be 100%. If it's accessible, then it's 100% new construction costs. You know, that's kind of why a lot of those haven't been connected or that there isn't any sidewalks okay. because of the costs. So I got you. But, you know, just keep that in mind. Be good to identify them and then yeah, see how it rolls out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. We will do that. And we're done with our street. No, we still have 50,000 left to go in street lighting. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's not bad. Well, actually, it's more than that. <laughs> that's just for this year? So, or? Well, that's only going to be half of it. We'll be asking for more probably in 1920 bond budget because this isn't enough um, to do completely do that project. So. Okay. Uh, just looking at the rest of these intersectional improvements. Um, well, the Hanley and Carmichael, um, that's postponed until the corridor study was done. Right. Same so with, I 19. thought the turn lanes signals were as well. Okay. Um, Anything else that anyone can think of? Me either. The, uh, the Hanley Road project that we're planning for next year, uh, I guess this year, sorry. Um, I had, had uh, expressed some concerns, desires, I guess, to see a, a final plan on that before we actually approve it. It was uh, scheduled to go through on a uh, consent agenda, uh, as a consent agenda item last time, and I, the meeting got canceled, so it didn't, didn't come to head, but I was going to ask that be pulled so we could have a discussion <coughs> on that. We haven't, we've talked concepts about what's gonna be where, but we haven't talked about, we haven't seen what's gonna be where. And we were on, wanting to add uh, turn lanes or right-hand turn lanes and, and uh, uh, there was concerns. Uh, the initial plan said you know, no, no marking for bike, bike uh, on-road bike uh, trails or shoulders. And uh, that was a, a large concern for me. That when, you know, so I had, I had asked that that be listed. And right now, Tom and I are planning to get together on Thursday morning and okay. to talk about that and try to work through those issues. And that sounds good. So, all right. Well, hopefully that'll go well. Um, uh, it's not really on the agenda, although we're kind of talking about Hanley Road. So, uh, yeah, just a couple of comments would be fine, I, I think. You step up to the, the microphone, state your name and address. Um, I'm Jerry Bauer, and uh, I'm on the Bike and Pedestrian Committee. Uh, but hearing that there's some work that's going to be done on Hanley, I wanted to make sure that uh, it's bicycle rideable and designed to be safe for bicycles going out that way because right now it's the safest route out of town going up Hanley. Um, if you're going anywhere out of town south of I-94, the choice, uh, the other choice might be Crestview, but that's got all the traffic from all the stores along the road there, or going out Carmichael, and if you're riding a bike south on Carmichael toward F, the two lanes going south, they're blending together and cars are maneuvering and there's no paved shoulder there or anywhere for bikes to get away from that traffic. And so that's not very safe. So Hanley is right now wide and fairly open and it doesn't have really heavy traffic so bicycles can get up easily and then get down to Tower Road or go straight across to Old 35. So. That makes sense. So I would just like to 
say, uh, express that. Okay. Well, I should, as long as it's here, I have to mention this then. Okay. Here's where we are right now. A study was presented to council on December 7th by Glenn Van Warmer. The study addressed pedestrians, a uh, bunch of safety issues on ped pedestrian crossings. It addressed traffic, trucks, all the concerns that were coming from <coughs> the various homeowners associations, uh, Red Cedar Canyon, not sure if Heritage also had a homeowners association in the mix. So based on that, we had a special meeting uh, when this study was concluded uh, with the council on de December 7th. The direction at that time was to go with a recommended conversion from the existing four lane to a three lane, which is basically eastbound, westbound with center lefts. With that, there would be three select locations where there would actually be a raised concrete median. And we did not get any direction to add any bike lanes. In fact, the study <coughs> by SEH concluded and recommended not having bike lanes there for safety reasons. And again, it's in the report. And this is part of your memo, Jim, but um, right now, the consent agenda item was approve plans and specs, authorize the ad for bid, which generally is a formality type thing to start the bidding process. It was not my intent to bring plans to a meeting for the city council to review them at the meeting. As far as I know, that has never happened. But the direction from the previous two, three, four, five meetings was to proceed with the three lane conversion. So as of right now, that's how we're proceeding. If the council wants to change their mind, stop the project, revise the project, that's a council decision. But that's what I was gonna do as part of my update, which is the next line item. Right now we are, would be heading into the bidding phase and we would open bids on March 1. What we have planned in the, the base bid is the conversion from four lane to three lane, like I referenced, and the three concrete islands. There will be a bid alternate for two right turn lanes into, that was discussed at some of the meetings too. The alternate bid will provide a right turn lane into the business park at O'Neill and a right turn lane into the business park at Rock Street. Once we have those bids, then your council can evaluate, here's the base bid and here's how much the alternate would be to add those two right turn lanes. That's the direction received to date and that's the process that we're heading on right now. And obviously the council can change it if they want to because we haven't opened bids yet. So. Again, back to the item, the, the item's kind of a formality of approving the plans, authorizing the extra bid, and then there's typically about a three week period where contractors review the job, take a look at the plans, visit the site, put their bid documents and their, their uh, bid number together. So that's where we are with that project. So you guys are gonna meet on Thursday but, though, right? Yeah, we can meet and go over. Can you add Jerry to your meeting? Sure. Are you available Thursday morning? Thursday, uh, we're, we're talking about 9.30. Okay. As long as we're just, and the other update is Walnut Street Bridge. We had that Walnut Street Bridge uh, rehabilitation and that is now uh, in the same situation of bidding process. Okay. We hope to open up bids, I believe, on the 15th of February. Mm -hmm. uh, again, as you know, we wanted to try to get that project going early in the spring because it's going to involve shutting down the Dyke Road, which the Dyke Road Bridge, which in the essence does shut down the Dyke, Dyke Road. Um, and I don't know if, if, if you're aware, we did send out a notification letter to all the marinas from Stillwater down to Afton. Uh, we had this, the city staff uh, put a, a sign shop, put a, a sign out here because uh, people do, even in the winter, I know it's cold this morning, but yeah. uh, even in the winter, we, we get a lot of uh, pedestrian traffic coming out. And so there's a sign there that uh, gives us another, the walkers an advance warning that we are going to have that dike road closed to pedestrian and all traffic 
uh, for about two months and our estimate right now is for the months of April and May and try to get it done by the end of May for the ho holiday weekend is what that current schedule is. Sounds good. Will that be close to traffic underneath the bridge too? No, it's actually too, most of the work is on the surface, okay. uh, concrete and concrete repairs both on the deck and the sidewalk. Um, we do have some, basically it's probably pretty close to the normal water level. There's some pier repair, so there's to be some concrete pier repair there. Uh, we have a, that a little bit open-ended on the completion date because typically in the spring the river levels are high. If they're too high, we can't do that work. So if, it, if it's low, we'll see if we, we will get it done. But if it isn't, it might have to be done sometime later in the summer as far yep. as the pier work underneath. Okay. Any other project updates? Right. That was about it. Okay. Awesome. Any other items for future agendas? I can't Not think for me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, move to adjourn. So we, did you want to talk well, about I'm sorry. I totally blew, jumped past it because Tom got excited about project <laughs> updates. <laughs> so I forgot about this item, which is snow removal and operations. Uh, we have a number of people that, for whatever reason, have not been able to clear their sidewalks in a timely manner. So we have someone that goes out and checks on them. Mm -hmm. And as of Friday or? Yeah, well, as of, yeah, Friday. Mm -hmm. As of Friday, there were over 30, did you say? Yeah, we're up to 30. So. 30 areas of sidewalk that have not been cleared, which makes it hard for people to walk on, travel, pass through. That includes your postal carrier and can be an issue for police, fire, and EMS. So. So this is our first start of going out and trying to assess this and okay. see how it goes. I'll let you know. And do we need to adapt or is it what? Uh, no, we're just. It's already adapted. That's just the copy that is going into the doors. Okay, so we'll be sending this out as a notice to you if you have not cleared your sidewalks. Um, if you haven't, try to get out there and clear them off. Otherwise, you'll get a, is it a fine? Do we, no fine yet. Just I'll find you get clear it, it and then we'll yep. re, we'll, the cost will be assessed to the property. So we'll clear it and assess your property, kind of like we do with uh, grass cutting, yep. right? Mm -hmm. What's the reporting process for identifying these just uh, what is, complaints what is the that come in? The reporting process, how do they get on this list? Is it just oh, we have a or? seasonal person out there assessing it, and he puts the time and date, and then he puts it in the door when he but, delivers. But I mean, how do they, what's the initial, just complaints from people or well, observations? Some are, or? some are from people complaining, then we would go out and check it. Otherwise, he's just been trying to go around so either people complain or would they see it with mm -hmm. their own eyes? It's not that hard to spot, really. Yeah, there's a section of street on Wisconsin between Summer and Hunter Hill that uh, half of it's done, the other half is horrible. Uh, I walked through it the day after the snow and it, something had driven down there with big tracks, so you had tracks that wide so that they didn't remove the snow. So. I'm, not sure what that was all about, but that that piece of sidewalk is okay, we'll check consistently bad. Okay. okay. And I assume it's so the association there that uh, has that responsibility. Mm -hmm. Well, and with the 12-inch snow, you know, I, I I give credit to our crews and everybody else for doing a bang-up job. We had some equipment breakdown. We had some delays, but. Uh, somebody was bragging how St. Joseph had been cleared right away, and I said, well, that's pretty cool, but we have so many more lane miles that it's hard for us to get to everything right away. So everyone be patient, and hopefully we won't have another 12-inch storm anytime soon. So, All right. Uh, with that, uh, I guess I'll move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you.